psychiatrist said that stress is responsible for 90% of all doctor's visits. That's astonishing. It's astonishing. Nine out of 10. Yeah, and so the answer that I have found is meditation. Have you seen meditation positively affect schools and, and children? Yeah, you see it in the schools now. There are you know, mindfulness programs. Stress is being called the black plague of our century. Harvard Medical School has said that stress is responsible for 90% of all doctor's visits. That's astonishing. It's astonishing. Nine out of 10. Yeah, and so the harsh reality is that stress is making us stupid, sick, and slow. Yeah. And we don't want to be stupid, sick, and slow. We want to be fun and fast and healthy. Yes. And so the answer that I have found, the single most effective tool of getting rid of stress, not only from the now, mm -hmm. but all the stress that we've been accumulating in our body from the past, is meditation. And I know you, we've talked about some of the research, um, but maybe you could talk about a couple of things in terms of what happens to your body or your brain um, when you meditate? Mm -hmm. What are the, some of the benefits on the upside? We know that what the damaging effects stress has, but what are the positive effects when, when you get rid of that stress? Yeah, it's really exciting because we're living in this day and age where neuroscience can prove not only that meditation is good for us, but how different types of meditation impact the brain differently. Mm -hmm. So in mindfulness, where we're directing our focus, where someone's guiding you through, or you have a free app or something, a small part of the brain lights up, but very, very bright, which is different than in Ziva meditation where the whole brain lights up, but not as bright. So it's cool because the type of meditation that I teach is very restful, it's kind of mm. lazy, it's kind of surrendered. And so what's happening in the brain looks similar to what how the practice is. Right. And the cool thing there is that when the whole brain lights up, you're increasing neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to change itself. And you're also strengthening something called the corpus callosum, which I'm sure your folks are familiar with. Yeah. But it's that thin, thin white strip, the bridge between the past and future and present moment. It's the bridge between your critical and creative mind. It's the bridge yeah. between your masculine and your feminine. And so I'm sure your folks know, but the reason why I think you'd want a fat corpus callosum is that it allows you to come up with all those creative problem solving yeah. ideas when it counts. Have you seen meditation positively affect schools and, and children? Yeah, you see it in the schools now. There are you know, mindfulness programs, there are breathing programs, there's uh, the David Lynch Foundation has a quiet time program where they do transcendental meditation in the schools. These are all very helpful because what's happened to our kids, there's so much trauma with our kids today and they have what's called adverse childhood experiences and the more adverse childhood experiences you have literally diminishes your cognitive function you don't feel safe you have a lot of trauma your brain doesn't look much different than uh, a vet coming back from you know that has post-traumatic stress imagine a young kid in a, in a family that has domestic violence over 50 percent of our kids that go to public schools live in poverty that's an adverse childhood experience so their brain stops functioning properly. Their amygdala doesn't feel safe. You're in fight or flight, yeah. right? So you can't access your prefrontal cortex, your executive functions, which are, as you have taught, working memory, ability to focus and mobilize your attention span, decision making, like three pretty key elements to- For all of us. Yeah, but to learn. So they're, they're popped right out of that. They're in fight or flight. And what these, these programs do, social and emotional learning programs and these contemplative practices in the schools and breathing techniques, it teaches them the personal techniques on how to de-escalate themselves, how to get themselves out of fight or flight, which becomes essential to them being able to learn. So to me, it's like this, this yeah, you need computers and you need 3D printers and you need all this fancy stuff, it's great. But if you don't start with taking care of the kid, right. and Part one of that is getting that brain to function properly. I know I'm biased, but to me, meditation is, like you just said, the ultimate reset. Because I can have a million things going on. I have a two-year-old son. I'm running a company. Mm. And we're, and we're all in the middle of this pandemic. I'm going through a huge life transition. I have a sick family member. So there's no shortage of things to yeah. be stressed about. There's no shortage of tabs open in our brains. And there's always a reason to not meditate, right? right. You can always find, well, I've got eight more emails to answer. I've got, you know, six more grocery things to do. There's always a reason to not meditate. And yet, if you do it, if you take that time to reset, to invest in yourself and invest that time, you end up getting a return on that investment. Yeah. You end up having more time in your day. You end up feeling better. Your sleep is more productive. You feel fresher and like you've actually gone in and closed all those tabs on your brain. So it, it quite literally, it's not just a mental reset. It actually over time's, time ends up being a physiological reset. How do you mean? 
because it, the meditation at the beginning will create neurochemistry. So it'll get rid of the stress chemistry, which is adrenaline and cortisol, stress hormones, but it'll start to produce dopamine and serotonin, which are bliss hormones. Mm. So you start to feel better in the meditation, which is nice, but if the point was just to feel good during the session, you could do any number of drugs, right? So, but the cool thing with meditation is that that bliss chemistry starts to stay with you throughout the rest of your day. So you feel better in your yeah. life, not just in the meditation. But here's the really cool part. Yes, meditation is gonna be a reset for your day, but over time, as you keep a daily practice, it, it can become a reset for your whole life and even your whole body. Because over time, it changes the physiology of your brain and your body. You can increase the size of your hippocampus by up to 17% with meditation. Wow. You strengthen something called the corpus callosum, which I'm sure your folks know about. It's the bridge between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And you're increasing neuroplasticity. So it's, it's like you're not just feeling good. It's not a bubble bath for your brain. You're changing the structure of your cells. You're healing yourself on a cellular level. So in addition to all the brain changes, this stress that gets stored in our cellular, and now we even know in our epigenetic memory, this stuff can start to come up and out. So you can actually heal not only stuff from your life, but the stuff you've inherited from previous generations. Everyone has a different process for meditation. Yeah, I just, I'm really straightforward. Um, I just use Headspace, it's mm -hmm. really easy. They've got a sleep pack that I've got 30 episodes. I'm working <laughs> way, through, way through that, I do it over and over and over again. Uh, in the morning, I have a different routine, but at night, the, the Headspace pack is, is easy to do. If I'm traveling and I'm learning and being coming better at it, that I don't really need it anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, that's how I started. And I find that clearing my thoughts, uh, letting go of the day, stopping ruminating thinking, stopping replaying what was yeah. going on, creating a barrier between the day and when I want to fall asleep, uh, meditation it helps, helps you to, that. to transition in those, those brainwave states from beta to those slower. 100%. Yeah, you want to go from beta waves down to alpha waves, which is sort of reflection and contemplation. And then you let that go and you end up down into ideally, obviously, when you're sleeping, beta, uh, del delta waves and then and ultimately into deep delta waves. So that's the goal. Amazing. Now, do you happen when you're doing your meditation to fall asleep from there? Is that uh, your, your you know, it's really point? weird. Not very often for okay. some reason. Uh, like I, I think that I'm trying now through uh, focusing on breath, through focusing on releasing tension from all the different parts of my body, uh, you know, really activating. You, you can basically feel your vagus nerve come online, right? And you can feel your parasympathetic system take over once you release all of that that's the scientist overthinking mm -hmm. meditation in their sleep routine, but and of course you want to try to let that go. Uh, but no, I, I don't have a tr I don't have trouble falling asleep uh, when I'm meditating. When you have space to think and to to meditate and to do different things, I mean, for me, it's like the morning, and you know, we had our friend Emily, who I've I learned meditation from, and mm -hmm. so like when I wake up in the morning, now I don't put, I put my I actually have a different phone that only has, it controls my timer mm -hmm. and that's it. So I can't see messages or anything or Instagram and all that stuff. Um, and I literally, I will go and I meditate for 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. And then I'll come in and I'll check my phone. But it's having that 40, 40 minutes or so of silence in the morning just to myself that is a really big reset for me. And the that the Ziva meditation that we we're talking about also helps me reset my 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 state in the morning. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have like darker thoughts or I have weird dreams, and then it's just like a little bit chaotic in my head. Yeah. And I think that meditation helps me reset, so then I can get into my creative space and get into my creative mode. Hi, Quick Brain. It's your brain coach. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Three things to do. Number one, make sure you share this because when you teach something, you get to learn it twice. Update your learning so you can update other people's learning as well. Number two, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing because if you miss a video, you miss a lot. And finally, make sure you hit that bell so you're notified and you find out when we put out the latest and the greatest. One extra thing, if you want really close attention, then text me. Here is my phone number, 310-299-9362. Did you remember that number? 310-299-9362. Shoot me a text and we'll stay in touch. Ask me your burning question. And I wish your days be full of lots of life, lots of love, lots of laughter, and always lots of learning. I'll see you in our next video.